Meet Ismael Elmayo Zambada, a 75-year-old man who has evaded imprisonment despite being responsible for trafficking thousands of tons of cocaine into the United States over the past 30 years. From marijuana to cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines, and fentanyl, El Mayo Zambada, the founder and mastermind of the Sinaloa cartel, holds a significant stake in the drug trade that has devastated countless American lives. While drug addiction and fatal overdoses have plagued the United States in the past three decades, Zambada was amassed billions of dollars and built a vast empire of businesses worldwide. His ventures span various industries, including car dealerships, construction companies, security firms, hotels, transportation corporations, agriculture, and real estate, among others. El Mayo Zambada is likely the wealthiest drug kingpin in history, with his organization generating an estimated annual revenue of $11 billion. Rumors abound about Zambada's alleged secret deal with the U.S. government, suggesting that he may be an informant, explaining his ability to evade capture. Others believe that he has skillfully maintained a low profile, ingratiating himself with the communities in Sinaloa where he hides. Regardless, Zambada's role in the history of global drug trafficking is undeniable. He has corrupted Mexican officials at all levels, enabling the expansion of the Sinaloa cartel, which stands as the largest criminal organization on earth. In this episode of Illicit Investigations, we delve into the network of companies owned by Ismael El Maya Zambada, the true leader of the Sinaloa cartel. We uncover details about his family's business structure, shed light on unknown aspects of his life, and reveal who will replace him as the leader of his criminal organization. Join us in this eye-opening story. The Sinaloa Mountains hold many secrets. One of the biggest ones is where Ismael Zambada Garcia, also known as El Mayo, is hiding. The U.S. government has offered a reward of $15 million for any information that leads to his apprehension. El Mayo has been clever enough to avoid getting caught for 50 years. Mayo Zambada is very much like Carlo Gambino of Italian organized crime in that he has never spent one minute in jail, ever. He doesn't use a cell phone, and neither do the few men who guard him all the time. He leads a rural lifestyle in the mountains, immersed against ranchers and peasant communities, gaining their trust and esteem while avoiding urban centers. He has established multiple security rings, enabling him to anticipate any advancement of Mexican law enforcement units towards his location. He has also been able to pay off Mexican politicians and military personnel at all levels, thereby constantly receiving privileged information. He's also known amongst the locals as El Señor del Sombrero, or the man with the hat, as well as by his initials, MZ. Some reports say El Mayo has diabetes and is not in good health, so he's planning to find someone to take his place in the Sinaloa cartel. But where did this enigmatic drug lord come from? Ismael Zambada Garcia was born on a ranch called El Alamo, located 30 miles south of Culiacan. His father worked as a merchant, his mother was a school teacher. At the age of 13, he met his lifelong love, Rosario Niebla Cardoza, also known as Chaito. Together they had five children, four girls and one boy. El Mayo grew up surrounded by horses and various crops such as citrus fruits, tomatoes and beans, but also marijuana and opium poppy. But it was not until the 1970s when his brother-in-law, a Cuban named Antonio Cruz, introduced him to the world of drug trafficking. El Mayo acquired knowledge in this field and assisted crews in drug deals taking place in Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Later on, he became a member of La Federación, a group of drug traffickers led by Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo. In the late 1980s, the group assigned different drug territories and El Mayo took control of Sinaloa. He became an enemy of the Ariano Felix family, who were the founders of the Tijuana Cartel. However, he developed close friendships with Amado Carrillo Fuentes, also known as the Lord of the Skies, who created the Juarez Cartel, as well as with Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, his partner and friend, and with Hector El Guerra Palma. El Mayo Zambada established an extensive drug empire with no boundaries. He controlled a big portion of the marijuana harvest in Mexico's Golden Triangle and smuggled it into the United States. He formed a partnership with Pablo Escobar to flood the U.S. market with cocaine. Additionally, he utilized local opium poppy from Sinaloa to produce heroin. 
In later years, he ventured into the production of synthetic drugs such as methamphetamines and fentanyl in makeshift labs near Culiacan, making billions of dollars in profits. El Mayo operated not only in Mexico, the US, and Canada, but also established routes and partnerships worldwide. He facilitated the shipping of drug-filled containers to Europe, catering to the Russian Mafia and the Andrangheta in Italy. He established cocaine routes extending to Australia, Southeast Asia, and China. Moreover, he owned a fleet of tuna fishing boats used to transport Peruvian cocaine to Yakuza gangsters in Japan. Over the decades, El Mayo employed a vast network of individuals who facilitated deals and forged alliances in Central and South America. He collaborated with prominent organizations like the Norte de Valle Cartel in Colombia and the notorious Brazilian criminal organization PCC. El Mayo groomed his eldest son, Vicente Zambada Niebla, to assume leadership of the Sinaloa Cartel. Known as Vicentillo, for several years he oversaw drug shipments from Colombia to Cancun, which were subsequently disrupted throughout the United States and Canada. However, Vicentillo eventually grew weary of the narco lifestyle and sought to strike a deal with the DEA. In the process, he was apprehended in Mexico City on March 19, 2009 and subsequently extradited to the United States. El Mayo Zambada places great value on family ties and is consistently relying on his sons and daughters to manage the family business. While the sons oversee the drug trafficking operations, the women take charge of other ventures. Together with Chayito, El Mayo had four daughters, Maria Teresa, Medium Patricia, Monica del Rosario, and Modesta. All of them are sanctioned by the United States Department of the Treasury. They are listed as owners of construction and transportation companies, large livestock farming businesses, and even daycares in Sinaloa. El Mayo has demonstrated astuteness in investing the proceeds from drug trafficking. Through the use of intermediaries and shell companies, he owns corporations in the fishing industry in Mazatlan and Baja, California. He also holds stakes in a major hotel chain in Mexico and owns the largest dairy farms in Sinaloa. In the past, his companies have even exported milk to the United States with support from the Export-Import Bank of the U.S. government. Federal investigations have uncovered his ownership of currency exchange businesses in various Mexican cities. He's also utilized companies in Los Angeles' fashion district for money laundering purposes. Moreover, he possesses real estate properties in Mexico, South America, Cyprus, and Dubai. El Mayo owns gas stations, importation companies, and technology distributors. His daughter-in-law, Cynthia Borboa Zazueta, who is married to Vicentillo, owns a company involved in the distribution of shoes, perfumes, and clothing. This company has also been utilized for money laundering activities. The Zambada family, led by El Mayo, is part of the elite class in Sinaloa. They are featured in social magazines, travel extensively, and enjoy their wealth. This photo reveals Mariel Gonzalez Zambada, one of his granddaughters, enjoying Paris. This other photo showcases Miguel Zambada Borboa, one of Vicentillo's sons alongside Mexican boxer Saul El Canelo Alvarez. The most luxurious car dealerships in Culiacan are owned by El Mayo Zambada. Additionally, the Zambadas operate several companies that facilitate the daily transportation of goods to the United States. When it comes to money laundry, the Sinaloa cartel is probably better than any other cartel in the world. And they are very adept at being able to launder the money, being able to put those funds into the global finance system. In 2012, HSBC, one of the world's largest banks, had to pay a fine of $1.9 billion to U.S. regulators for their involvement in facilitating money laundering for the Sinaloa cartel. Similarly, in 2010, Wachovia Bank, which is now part of Wells Fargo, admitted to laundering $384 million for the organization led by El Mayo Zambada. Furthermore, individuals associated with El Mayo attempted to acquire a small bank in Orange County, California in 2015 with the intention of facilitating the movement of drug money. However, their activities were ultimately uncovered and they were apprehended by the FBI. According to sources close to the Zambada family, El Mayo always wanted his eldest son, Vicentillo, to assume leadership of the cartel. However, this couldn't happen. 
When Vicente Zambada Niebla was extradited to Chicago, El Mayo authorized him to cooperate with the U.S. federal agents and provided him with fresh information to aid in arrests and the seizure of drug shipments. Vicentillo testified in Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's trial and became a crucial informant for the U.S. government. His wife, Cynthia, was permitted to relocate to the U.S. with $3 million in cash to start a new life, along with their children. Many members of the Sinaloa cartel, such as the Chapitos, distanced themselves from El Mayo Zambada and even declared war against his Sicarios, suspecting him of being a snitch and having a secret deal with the U.S. government, which they believe makes him untouchable. Since Vicentillo began cooperating, several loyal associates and workers of the Sinaloa cartel have fallen. One of them was Rodrigo Arechiga Gamboa, also known as El Chino Antrax. Starting as a Sicario, he swiftly ascended within the organization. El Mayo even considered him as a son. El Chino acted as an ambassador for El Mayo Zambada, traveling worldwide to negotiate deals with various criminal organizations. He visited Macau in China to establish alliances with Chinese and Japanese mafias. He traveled to Europe to finalize agreements with Russians and the Calabrian Mafia. He also went to the United Arab Emirates to oversee drug deals and money laundering operations. El Chino used a Mexican passport and even possessed a U.S. visa. He frequently visited Las Vegas to attend fights of Mexican boxers. Although El Chino was wanted by the DEA, his fake identity as Norberto Sicarios Garcia remained unknown to the authorities. El Mayo Zambada shared this information with Vicentillo, leading to the capture of El Chino in Amsterdam in December 2013. El Mayo always considered El Chapo Guzman to be his closest friend and associate. He even orchestrated El Chapo's escape from the Puente Grande prison in 2001. El Mayo and El Chapo worked together to prepare their children for the drug business between 2001 and 2014, ensuring they would be capable of assuming control when the time came. Ismael Zambada Imperial, known as El Mayito Gordo, is El Mayo's second eldest son from a different woman. El Maito Gordo was a close friend of Ivan Archivaldo Guzman, El Chapo's eldest son. Plans were underway for the two of them to take over the reins of the Sinaloa cartel. However, El Maito Gordo was captured in Sinaloa in 2014 and extradited to the United States five years later. He also cooperated with the U.S. authorities and has recently been seen residing in San Diego, California, indicating that he is no longer active in the drug trade. Next is Serafine Zambada Ortiz an American-born son of El Mayo, also from a different woman. He spent five years in prison in California for drug trafficking and returned to Culiacan. He remains an option as a potential successor to his father. Teresita Zambada Ortiz, also born in the United States, is married to Juan Carlos Felix Gastelum, known as El Chavo Felix, a key lieutenant of El Mayo. El Chavo will likely inherit significant power within the organization. Lastly, there's Ismael Zambada Sicarios, also known as El Mayito Flaco. He's wanted by U.S. authorities but has never been apprehended. He has a similar character to his father. He is smart and prefers a rancher lifestyle avoiding the cities. He exercises caution and has maintained a close relationship with his father in recent years. Therefore, it is highly likely that he will assume leadership of the Sinaloa cartel once El Mayo is no longer in the picture. This is Illicit Investigations. Subscribe now to our channel to go beyond the headlines.